Earth has been home to life for an estimated 3.7 billion years and presently supports 8.7 million animal and plant species. Naturally, we've long pondered if other planets in the universe could support life in the same way. In their quest for such planets, researchers want to locate those that are most similar to Earth. Some speculate that our small blue dot isn't the best there is, and that we'll soon find something much greater. Hello everyone, welcome back. You are watching Z, the Space Fanatics. And today we're answering an unusual question, did scientists just discover planets better than Earth for life? Do you require answers to the major questions? Then why not subscribe to Z for more videos like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking information. There is only one planet on which we are confident there is life and that is our home, Earth. Humans have contemplated the potential of life on other worlds since at least the era of ancient antiquity over two millennia ago. The famous Greek philosophers Democritus and Epicurus who believed that everything was made up of endless atoms in an infinite emptiness, believed there had to be other similar worlds out there. If our planet were the only one, it would be like a single ear of wheat growing on a vast plain, according to Epicurus' disciple Metrodorus of Chios. Of course this was before the discovery of the telescope, so the concept was quite abstract at the time. It arrived at a time when the mainstream perspective was still geocentric, with the Earth at the center of the cosmos. We are now closer than ever to discovering extraterrestrial life. Since the 1980s, an international search has been undertaken utilizing a variety of technological technologies ranging from radio telescopes to infrared instruments aboard satellites. We now have almost 5,500 confirmed exoplanet discoveries. The majority of planets were discovered by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope and they are all listed in NASA's exoplanet database. Once catalogued, they are evaluated for habitability and, if found to be potentially habitable, they are added to the catalog of habitable exoplanets. The Planetary Habitability Laboratory at the University of Puerto Rico in Arecibo is principally responsible for this effort. The first thing scientists search for is if the exoplanet has the necessary circumstances for liquid water on its surface. The habitable zone, often known as the Goldilocks zone is the region of space surrounding a star where planetary orbits are optimal for liquid water. This is regarded as the most important necessity, because water is required for life on Earth. It is considered that if a planet can support liquid water, life will not be far away. However there are countless more aspects to consider, such as radiation from the host star, atmosphere composition and various geophysical factors. The Earth Similarity Index or ESI is awarded to all exoplanets in the catalog. This value goes from 0 to 1, with 0 indicating no similarities and 1 indicating identicality. The reasoning behind this is that Earth is the only location where we know life exists. As a result, researchers believe that the closer an exoplanet is to Earth, the greater the likelihood of life. However not all astronomers agree on this and some have claimed in the last decade that the assumption is incorrect. While Earth is a hotspot for life, we cannot be convinced that it is the best possible home for life. Astronomers frequently say that the more you study about Earth, the more you appreciate how fortunate we are to be here. It is not only liquid water that makes our world a paradise. There are numerous other components as well, such as the magnetic field which absorbs the majority of the sun's damaging ultraviolet radiation, or the tectonic plates that shape continents and transport heat to the Earth's surface. Not to mention Jupiter, whose gravity may capture potentially deadly asteroids and comets. So there are valid reasons to define our home as life-giving. However physics professor John Armstrong and astrophysicist Renee Heller disputed this claim in 2014. They argued that certain types of planets with characteristics substantially different from Earth could be even more habitable, in fact superhabitable. They defined superhabitable as a planet that can support a wider variety of flora and animals. The researchers continue to believe that life requires water, but they feel that there may be planets that are better suited to biodiversity than Earth. 
They disagree with the notion that the Goldilocks zone is a good predictor of habitability. Many rocky worlds inhabitable zones are uninhabitable. And geothermal activities have the potential to make planets outside the zone livable. Europa, Jupiter's icy moon is one such case. While its top is covered in ice, scientists believe a subsurface ocean lies beneath, maintained warm by tidal heating. The hunt for alien life, according to Heller and Armstrong, should be less human-centric and more biocentric. Primary criteria should include a planet's age, mass, location in its system, the spectral type of its host star and a few other characteristics. The notion encompasses not just exoplanets, but also exomoons. The researchers believe that superhabitable planets are likely to be slightly larger, more massive and older than Earth. A larger surface area would allow for more shallow waters, which warm faster than deep oceans and hence make for more comfortable ecosystems. The ideal mass would be nearly twice that of Earth, suitable for plate tectonics, a strong magnetic field and a thick atmosphere. Earth's magnetic field, which is created by the rotation of a liquid outer core, protects humans from cosmic radiation. A larger world may theoretically have a stronger magnetosphere. A thicker atmosphere would warm the surface, and warmer epochs on Earth have traditionally supported biological variety. A superhabitable planet should ideally orbit a different type of star than the Sun. The Sun is a yellow dwarf, whereas orange dwarfs which have lower luminosities and are less massive, live much longer. Orange dwarfs also known as K-type main sequence stars can be stable for 17 to 70 billion years, significantly longer than our Sun's 10 billion year lifespan. This would give more time for life to form and evolve. They also emit far less UV rays. There are currently 24 exoplanets rated possibly habitable, although only two of these are confirmed planets. However it is possible that other possibilities have already been identified and missed. This begs the intriguing question, what might life be like on such a planet? Of course we can only speculate on the details. However rainfall would be more common and natural flora would be considerably different. Life may be greater and more numerous under a denser atmosphere and higher mass. Plants may use alternative photosynthesis mechanisms due to the varying spectrum output of other host stars. Plants may evolve pigments that absorb these wavelengths because orange dwarfs are cooler and redder than the sun. Instead of green, their leaves could be blue or another color. The discovery of a superhabitable planet would have far-reaching repercussions. For one reason, it could provide significant insight into the fictitious, Great Filter. This is the hypothesis that life is uncommon in the cosmos due to some undiscovered barrier between the earliest beginnings and the highest degrees of growth. For example life may have a tendency to destroy itself. Or with its asteroids and rogue black holes, the universe is far more deadly than we realize. We're not sure if such a great filter exists at all, or if it's behind or ahead of us. This topic could be illuminated by life on a superhabitable world. If we see that life tends to get stuck in its most basic form, that obstacle may be behind us. On the other hand, if we discover a planet teeming with complex life that has comfortably endured for billions of years, perhaps we should investigate how they did it. Perhaps they had no desire to leave their homeworld and thus avoided some of the risks associated with interplanetary expansion. Alternatively, we may discover the ruins of a once great extraterrestrial civilization which may provide some answers. Both options would place the barrier in front of us and also let us know what to look out for. What are your thoughts? Is there anything we left out? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on our latest content.